Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. In our last few segments, we've been talking about taxes, mostly about deferred taxes, how they work, how we put everything together, how we make some basic calculations, and then we started walking through the steps to actually figuring out the journal entry that we need to make to record deferred taxes, taxes expense, taxes payable, and bring it all together. That's what we're going to pick up now, is actually using these steps to do an example. So as a brief refresher, here are our seven steps to calculating deferred taxes. We start with income before taxes. We get rid of our permanent differences. We add or subtract our temporary differences. That allows us to get an income tax payable or a receivable if the government owes us money. Then we're going to adjust for deferred taxes. And once we've got that number, we can figure out our adjustment in step six. And finally, in step seven, yes, the best part, the journal entry. So let's jump into an actual example so we can see how this all comes together. And I'm just going to tell you right now that I'm going to do most of this work in Excel. So if you're taking the class with me on our D2L page, there is a template that you can download from the Chapter 19 folder. And you might want to download that now and get it up and running in Excel so you can follow along more easily. If you don't have that template, we'll try to walk through it slowly so that you can build this example with me. This is SE Incorporated. They have two temporary differences that we need to look at according to their tax department. The first of these will cause higher taxable revenues in future years. So we'll have higher taxable revenue of 55,000 in year three, 60,000 in year four, 65 in year five. In addition, we've got a temporary difference that's gonna lead us to have higher expenses in the future, 20,000 higher in year three, 60,000 higher in year five. So if you think about that, if we're going to have higher revenues in the future, that must mean we'll have lower revenues now. It's just a difference in timing. Well, that means then if I'm going to recognize 55, 60, and 65 later, I must not be recognizing it now. And if I'm going to have higher expenses in year three and year five, 20 and 60,000 respectively, then I must not have those expenses this year. In addition to these temporary differences, SCE reports revenues of 1.2 million, total expenses of 900,000. There's a 30% enacted tax rate. And we didn't talk about enacted tax rate earlier, so let's take a second and talk about it now. An enacted tax rate means it's passed. It is law. And under US GAAP, you must use the enacted tax rate. So even if Congress has passed it, it's all the way to the president's desk. He's promised to sign it. If he has not signed it by year end, it's not enacted, so you can't use that percentage in your calculation. You have to go back to the old number and use what's currently law. So please make a note of that. You have to use the enacted tax rate, not what you think it's going to be or what you hope it will be, but by law, what do you think the tax rate is going to be? Of those $1.2 million in revenues, 50000 of that is because of a life insurance policy that was paid out because one of the company's directors passed away. SCE has not had any deferred taxes in the past. So we don't have a beginning balance to worry about. We want to make the necessary journal entry, yes, to record income tax expense in year two. So let's move to Excel. This is example one, calculating basic deferred taxes. And we'll start, of course, with step one, which is to calculate income before taxes. Now I should say right here, I'm going to break down all of these templates step by step by step. So it's easy to follow along with the steps that we've created. If you have different ways you want to create this because it makes more sense to you, that's fine. Please feel free to tweak it. But again, we're going to make sure we do it step by step so that it is very clear how it fits into the discussion we've already had. So to get income before taxes, I take my revenues minus my expenses and that's going to give me my income before taxes and i am going to do a little bit of formatting here i'm going to go ahead and make this column a little bit bigger and i'll indent so it's easier to see and then i'm going to use this column b for most of my calculations so i'm going to reformat it so that it shows my numbers as currency that's just easier for me to see. So our revenue amount was 1.2 million. You'll see here that it's already formatting it for me, so it looks great. 
our expenses we were told were 900,000 and I'm going to sum those up and that's going to give me my income before taxes. So that's step one, income before taxes. Step two is to add or subtract permanent differences. So I'm going to start with income before taxes. We have one permanent difference, and that was a life insurance payout. And it was for $50,000. Now, let's see. The easiest way to figure out how we add or subtract this in every case is to use a shortcut. And this shortcut is one of our key concepts because it really makes a difference between struggling through deferred taxes and the tax calculations or just whizzing through it and really understanding what's going on. What I do is I compare. Gap is $50,000 in revenue. Tax is $0 in revenue because I'm not taxed on the 50,000, so I don't have to report it at all. So if I want to get from gap to tax, I need an adjustment of negative 50,000. And that's what I'm going to put into my spreadsheet. Please, I'm just going to stop here and make a big plea. Please get in the habit of drawing this simple graph. Gap number Tax number, how do I get from gap to tax? That's my adjustment. Again, if you can be comfortable with that, everything else will flow so much easier for you, which makes this one of our key concepts. So please make sure you're comfortable with it. All right, let's take that 50,000 and we'll put it into our spreadsheet. And then I'm going to calculate my book taxable income and I'm going to sum those two up so this is what I think I should have to pay taxes on for gap purposes next step three I need to calculate taxable income. to do that I'm going to take my book taxable income which is this number and I'm going to make adjustments. And I had two kinds of adjustments. I had a difference in revenues and I had a difference in expenses. And I'm not gonna to try to figure out those numbers. I'm gonna to try to draw it out so that it really makes sense to me. So let's jump back to PowerPoint where I can do this more easily. And we're gonna start with income before taxes. And we're going to draw year two, this is a timeline here, year two, year three, year four, and year five. What we were told was that our revenues in year three would be $55,000 higher in the future. So I'm going to add $55,000 thousand dollars in revenue in year four we were told it would be even higher it would be sixty thousand it would be higher in the future for tax purposes and in year five higher still sixty five thousand I, I forgot my thousand over here Now again, because it's a temporary difference, and I was told by my tax department it was temporary, that means that if I have 55, 60, and 65, I'll recognize in the future, that means I must not be recognizing it now. So if I take 55 plus 60 plus 65, I get 180,000. That means that for tax purposes, I'm way down here at a negative 180 for this year. And if I were to add up these four boxes, I would get zero. That's a temporary difference because it adds up to zero. Now we're not done yet because we have one other difference and that's our expenses. And we were told that in year three, we would have an additional expense of $20,000. 
So that's going to bring me down here to 35,000. In year four, there was no expense difference or cost difference. So we just have the revenue. In year five, however, the cost difference or the expense difference was even bigger. It was 60,000 which means that I'm now at a $5,000 difference. Now again, for this year, I'm looking at those expenses. So I take the 20,000 plus the 60,000, and if my expenses will be higher in the future, they must be less now. So I'm going to go up $80,000 for a net effect of only negative 100,000. Again, if I add it up, the negative 20 plus the negative 6 plus the negative 60, and I have that negative, let me put that in there now, give me that 80, and they balance out. Positive 80 minus 20 minus 60, it balances out. So for this year, let's go ahead and put these numbers into our spreadsheet. So it was 180,000 for the revenue, negative. And it was a positive 80,000 for the expenses. The expenses are going to be less this year for tax purposes because they'll be higher in the future. And again, I'm going to add that up. And if I've done it right, this will be $100,000 lower than that 250. And sure enough, there it is. That 100,000 again is this number right here. We call that taxable income. Now we move on to step four, and that's to calculate income tax payable or can be receivable if we're getting a refund. So I'm going to start with my taxable income, and I'm going to multiply by my enacted tax rate, which in this case we were told was 30%. And if I multiply that, 150,000 times 30%, then my taxes payable for the current year are $45,000. And that's step four. And this is the first of the numbers that's going to go into my journal entry. The next thing we need is to figure out our deferred tax effects. And the easiest way to do that in this case is to go back to our calculations here. So remember that deferred taxes are not based on what's happening this year. I've already got a tax rate and a tax amount for this year. What I'm looking for are the effects in the future. So let's see. If I take this 35000 times the 30% tax rate, I'll end up with an adjustment of 10500 In this year, I've got a $60,000 adjustment, again times... 30%, so that's 18,000. Over here, my net effect is the 5,000, so 5,000 times 30% is 1,500. Again, if, you, if we go back to step five, we look at gap versus tax for every year, which is what I've got in the 35, the 60, and the 5,000. That's the first part of step five. I then multiply those by the tax rate in each future year. And I don't have any information that would make me think that my enacted tax rate is different. So I'm just going to assume it's the 30% unless my tax department says, hey, we're moving into a higher bracket or a lower bracket or the tax law has changed, etc. The last part of step five is to add these numbers up. So 10,500 plus 18,000. Somehow I put in part of a negative sign there. That should be there. And then 1,500. And if I add those up, I end up with net deferred taxes of $30,000. And again, what I'm looking at is all of these future numbers and what those future differences are going to either cost me or save me in the future. Now, let me just stop right here. We had a negative $100,000 adjustment to my book taxable income to get to taxable income. If we drop book taxable income, does that mean we're going to have a deferred tax asset? 
or a deferred tax liability. Well, the logic there again is, am I going to pay more taxes or less taxes in the future? And in this case, looking at these numbers, because the revenues are going to be higher and the expenses aren't going to be much lower, I'm going to end up owing more money in the future and saving money now. If I owe more money in the future, that's a liability. So when I look at my deferred tax account, what I'm saying is I want to end with a $30,000 credit because it's a deferred tax liability. I will owe more in the future than I owe now. Now we were told in the example that we started at zero. We've never done this before. So to get from a debit of zero or a credit of zero, either way, to an ending credit of 30,000, my adjustment has to be $30,000 this year. And that is step six. So all of this portion up here is step five, and this part down here is step six. Now that I know steps five and six, I can do my journal entry. Yes. So let's do that. And in future examples, we will actually do some of these calculations here in Excel. But for now, we're just going to make the journal entry. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to start with what we know for sure. And we know that we have income tax payable of $45,000. And let me just change this really quick or it's going to bug me. That needs to be payable. There we go. I know my income tax payable amount. I also know my deferred tax amount. I have it right here. It needs to be a credit of $30,000. So deferred tax liability in this case needs to be $30,000. My income tax expense can be calculated in one of two ways. The simplest way is to go up here to my book taxable income. $75,000, that's my income tax expense. And I could put that number right down here. Now that method works as long as your enacted tax rate will not change. If it is going to change, that shortcut doesn't work anymore because part of what's going to change my deferred taxes is the fact that in the future I may end up paying more or less taxes. And that's going to roll back into what my expense needs to be this period to account for those future differences. So even though you might want to use this shortcut, I recommend that you don't. The best way to do income tax expense is to make it the plug figure. So in this case, I need a debit to offset these two credits. There's my $75,000. Again, since the tax rate is going to stay the same, both of these methods work. But as soon as your enacted tax rate starts changing, the shortcut doesn't work anymore. So you may want to just get in the habit of making your taxes the plug figure. In fact, that's such a crucial piece for most companies, since their tax rates are changing, that I'm going to say that's another of our key concepts, is knowing that the best way to get income tax expense is to make it a plug figure. This is our adjusting entry for income taxes. And there we go. Now this segment has run a little longer than I like because I wanted to keep all of this example together. We're going to stop there though. When we come back, we're going to do another example which will illustrate the need to do income tax expense as a plug figure because we're going to look at an example of what happens when our enacted tax rate is going to change in the future. Tell you, more fun stuff coming all the time. We'll see you then. Thanks.